Every story I tell is true as well as factual. This one time, I was asleep in the dead of the night, and all of a sudden I remembered I forgot to feed my cat. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my poor cat must be starving. So I jumped out of bed and I went into my kitchen. I was looking around the floor, tr frantically trying to find the cat food. And I finally had to like sort of stop myself, shake myself and say, Monica, remember who you are. You don't own a cat. <laughs> In fact, you don't like cats. You're sleepwalking. Go back to bed. That is a true story. I'm a little bit embarrassed and sorry if my credibility has now decreased that I'm a sleepwalker, but it's true. Why do I start this talk um, to educators in particular with this story besides the fact it's funny? It's because I think this is what the theology of the body by Pope John Paul does. It is to shake us, to remind us who we are, made in God's image and likeness so that we learn to love and be loved. Now, I know the analogy is not apt because cats I'm supposed to like and I'm going to spend purgatory time figuring out why I like cats. Um, but hopefully you understand what I mean, that we have been sleepwalking now for a long time. And the sexual revolution and all sorts of other crazy stuff has taken us and made us sleepwalk. And so it's time for us to wake up. I'm very honored to be here in Faribault. Minnesota. Does anybody know where that is? I guess you do, <laughs> and now I do, but I say that because think about how Christianity began with a small group of people, and it spread worldwide from there. So perhaps this is what your ministry is doing. You are starting this small little community to set you all on fire, and then who knows what will happen. So I congratulate you. I'm very glad you're here. Now, this, I didn't think y'all got the talk, but you do. So don't cheat, okay? Don't look ahead yet. Um, the, the, the thing I want to cover, here we go, is first of all, a quiz. Okay, I wouldn't say it out loud if I were you. Um, and this, this slideshow doesn't correspond with this because this is longer, and so it's just a few slides, okay? Um, my quiz to you is, how do you know that you're human? Don't say it out loud. I wonder how many of y'all would get this. The answer is your body. You know that you're human because you have a human body. If you didn't have that answer in your head, think, I need the theology of the body. Like I give this quiz when I give pro-life talks to youth or whatever, and they're like, because I have an intellect of will, because I love whatever, that's true. But the first answer should be our physicality, your body. Okay, now this is another hard quiz question. Ready? How do you know that you're male or female? You better get that one. Okay, your body, you have a male body or a female body. So why do I um, emphasize this? It's because I think that most of us think that we're avatars. In other words, we think that the body doesn't matter. We think that our body is a mere shell rather than what Pope John Paul says about the body. It is like a sacrament, a visible sign of an invisible reality which conveys that reality. Your, my inner life is conveyed by our bodily actions. We are not avatars. Now, I know some people here are going to be from public school teachers, etc. So I'm going to try to integrate some of this as if you didn't have to bring up Jesus and the church. And that's one way you could do that with kids in public school. Because they are, as you probably know, are being taught now, well, you know, don't let your parents tell you that just because you have a female body, you're not necessarily female. You should decide for yourself. That's called gender identity theory. It's very dangerous. But you as a teacher can say, oh, you know, of course you're a female. Of course I'm going to call you he if you have a male body and she with a female body. This is really dangerous. So even the most basic thing, my quiz, has everything to do with the theology of the body. Now, um, the key points that um, I want to cover, and this is on your handout, um, would be this. The, the brief historical context of the theology of the body. Often I say T-O-B, that's theology of the body. Ideas have consequences, and I want to show them to you. And then we'll get into the answer. The point of departure is the body. You know what point of departure means? It means where you and I should start from when we're discussing things with people, especially in the public school realm. 
We don't have to bring up Jesus, the Bible, the church, although we could in the right venue, but sometimes we could just focus on the body. And then the practical applications, uh, ap applications with that, and then finally I'm going to end with, this is my body given, your and my personal living out of the theology of the body. Here's the milieu in which we have come from, I think. This is by Dr. Peter Kraft, where we have the classical, which is Greek and Roman, reason, and then the biblical Jew, Christianity, and faith. Then with St. Thomas Aquinas and the other scholastics that came together in the medieval synthesis, but then it splits apart with the Renaissance, reason only, and Protestantism, faith only. And that's where I think we are right now. And so what about the Renaissance reason only? We call them humanists. And I put humanists in quotation marks because they're not really humanists because they only emphasize body, works, reason, natural, earth, time, objective truth, visible, human, and man. And then the Christian's concern, which is not true Christianity, is only for soul, grace, faith, supernatural, heaven, eternity, personal experience, invisible, divine, and God. In other words, we suffer from detachment. One of the key words in the theology of the body by Pope John Paul is detachment. And particularly, we are detached from the body. And we're detached from the idea that's integration. And so, what we have is secularism versus Protestantism. Let me say it in a quick nutshell. Are you going to choose man, that is men and women, or are you going to choose God? By the way, that's a, that's a trick question. When I used to be a teacher, I would say, I wouldn't answer if I were you. And all my Catholic students thought to be good Catholic, they chose God. And I said, what about yourself? What about humans? Don't you want to choose humans as well? See, they had this sort of Protestant mindset. Instead, it's choosing both, both of these columns. And this is what I would suggest to you is why we're so confused, because we've had all these revolutions where all these things seem to be contradictory. But I would argue that the main thing that the theology of the body does is it brings together this division. Instead of faith and reason being separated, they actually coexist. And they feed off of each other. And so this is the whole project of Pope John Paul's theology of the body. This is why when people only think it's about sex and sexuality, they're missing the whole point, I think. The theology of the body goes along with Pope John Paul's whole pontificate, which George Weigel, his biographer, says he is trying to bring back Christian humanism. Christian, Catholic, humanism. Knowing that man, all of us humans, we matter. This is the project of the theology of the body. So let's keep going through this. And so what is being healed is this. This, it's the Catholic and. These two columns come together when the theology of the body is understood properly. All of these coexist. They go hand in hand. How do we know especially the bottom one, man and God? Because in the God-man, Jesus Christ, true God and true man, that's why we need to choose both. Otherwise, we don't even choose the incarnation or we don't believe that Jesus was truly human. This is a key thing. Um, you could look on your, your handout for this diagram that that's what I think theology of body brings together. Here's Pope John Paul's thesis. The body and the body alone makes visible the invisible realities, the spiritual and the divine. I'll repeat that. The body and only the body makes visible the invisible reality, the spiritual and the divine. Notice I am underscore divine because that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. And most theology, the body speakers, when they speak about the theology body, they're really talking about the divine because God is a communion of persons, and our bodies show that. If you don't understand, if you haven't heard uh, Theology Body, I will get to that in just a second. But I just want to point out the spiritual is also what needs to be conveyed in the Theology Body, and I'll show you how to do that. This is my diagram of TOB in a nutshell, which is in your handout. Look at the centerpiece. The centerpiece is the husband and wife and baby. The husband and wife and baby. They, they are the centerpiece because we can know more about God 
by knowing more about marriage and the family. So the more we know about this reality, the more we're going to know about God's inner life. God is a communion of life and love. And also we're going to know about what it means to be Catholic in relationship with Jesus and his church. And the new members come about through baptism. If I had um, a, a, the task just to go through the theology body per se, I would show you how this diagram really encapsulates any, everything, even about heaven and celibacy for the kingdom, like the priesthood and so forth. But suffice it to say that this diagram shows you the theology of the body, especially how the body reveals God. Okay, now here's my quiz question again. You ready? How do you know how to be a husband or how to be a wife? Answer, you need to know how to be male or female. Male or female. And we've already talked about how do you know male or female because you have a male body or a female body. So let me say this in a different way. We, I would say when we're teaching young people, we have to first talk about what it means to be female and thus the female body is the point of departure. Same thing with male. And this has to do with the body reveals the spiritual, not just the divine, but the spiritual, the individual person. If you're still confused, we're going to get this. It takes a long time to develop, okay? We're going to get through this. Even before talking to young people about masculinity and femininity in the body, then we have to know what it means to be human. And of course, how do we know what it means to be human? We have to know what the human body is about. The theology of the body, the point of departure is this idea of the body. If we don't get this right, if we skip over the body, we're not going to understand who we are. We're not going to understand what it means to be Catholic. We're not going to understand the gift of self, which is the meaning of life.